Saturn's Enceladus has an ocean. So does Jupiter's Europa. But these aren't the only moons where life could emerge. Saturn has another moon, Titan, with an even greater potential for life. In 2005, Cassini sent a probe named Huygens on a one-way mission to Titan. For just three and a half hours, Huygens transmitted live pictures from the hostile surface, over one and a half billion kilometers away. But then it ran out of power. It was just incredible. This was the first time humans had ever touched this moon with something of our own making. It was just an event that should have been celebrated the world over. We should have had ticker tape parades in every major city across the US and Europe to celebrate this. It was that history making and that astonishing. Raindrops on Titan are twice as big as raindrops on Earth. But the rain isn't water, it's methane. On Earth, methane is a gas. But on Titan, it's a liquid, because the moon is so cold. There may be methane icebergs, there's certainly methane lakes and rivers, and there's methane rain and methane clouds, and maybe bugs swimming in methane. Bugs living in liquid methane may sound unbelievable. But scientists have discovered that Enceladus, Europa, and Titan are all covered with a substance called tholin. Tholin contains the chemical building blocks for life to begin. Could life emerge on any or all of these moons? We can't obtain any of the tholin from the moons. But Chris Mackay makes it in the laboratory. He zaps a mixture of gases found on Titan with electricity. What he gets is a reddish-brown material. So this is what we make, tholin, this sort of non-biological organic material. It's produced by chemical energy put into simple molecules like methane and nitrogen, and here we got it. And that's the material we see on Titan. We see evidence for something like this on Enceladus. We see it on the surface of many of the moons in the outer solar system. This is nature's recipe for making the stuff that life eventually emerges from. Somewhere in the outer reaches of our solar system, on some remote moon, life may have already emerged. But it probably won't be life as we know it. Life 2.0 doesn't necessarily have to have the same genetics as life 1.0, right? In fact, the more different it is, the more interesting it is. Whether it's the same or very different, the discovery of life on the moons of our solar system will change the way we look at the universe. I think that should we ever find that life had originated not once, but twice, in our solar system, then you, you, you can easily dismiss any arguments that say that life is unique to the Earth. Moons are small, but they're still diverse and dynamic worlds. They help us understand how the universe works. They're an essential part of the cosmic machine. Without any moons, our solar system would be a very different place. And without our moon, life may never have evolved on Earth. And who knows, when and if we find new life somewhere else in the universe, its home may not be another planet at all. It might be a moon.